Okay, so now I just wanted to do a problem where I kind of put a lot of this together right here. And so let's say we have a giant sphere right here. And instead of a block, this could have been a skater right here, a person standing on roller skates right here. And let's say he doesn't know how to skate very well. Someone gave him a slightly little infinitesimal tap and he starts to sl slide down this thing right here. Since he's on perfect roller skates, there's no friction right here. And there's going to be a some point when he gets to here where he's going to leave the sphere right here. Once he leaves the sphere, he becomes a projectile and he's going to come down and hit the ground right here. We want to calculate, what we want to calculate is what angle theta has to be where he flies off the sphere and where on the ground is he going to hit? Just in case before you get up there, you'd like to know where to put the mattress right there so you can protect yourself. You know it's going to be more than R from here because there's R. So it's, you know, it's going to be more than R right here, but less than 10 R or something. Okay. So what do we want to do right here? We know that if you're going to leave the surface right there, then the normal force goes to zero. Remember, Right here, you have a normal force, but as it's going faster and faster, the normal gets smaller and smaller, and it eventually goes to zero right there at that point. So, since they're giving us information about the normal force, I don't want to use energy there. I'm going to use forces at that point, right where the normal goes to zero. Well, if we look at the forces on you right there, the only force we have is mg. Well, just before that, you had a normal, but now you don't even have a normal. The only force you have is mg right here, and you're going in a circle. So the inward component, since that angle is theta, the angle in here is theta, the inward component is mg cosine theta, and that equals mvb squared over r. So we can solve for vb. vb squared is gr cosine theta. Okay, so now we've got the speed as a function of theta right there. Now we need to look at energy between this point and that point because we know how much energy it has there. We know the height. The height is 1, 2R. So we know the potential. We also know the kinetic because you're starting from rest. So we know all the energy there and that should be the same as the energy there because there's no friction and no hand force right there. So if we come back to our energy equation right here, remember the initial energy plus the work due to hand and friction equals the final energy. Well, there is no work due to hand and friction, so those are both zero. You had no kinetic up here. You had no spring in this problem, so they're both zero. So the only thing you have is gravitational energy. If I call H equals zero here, H is equal to R there, H is equal to 2R. So you have to start off with mg2R. Now, uh, that's all of your energy. Now, when you're at this point, you have kinetic and potential. You're moving and you have a height. Your height right there would be R. And then that distance, since that's theta, this height would be R cosine theta from this triangle. So the total height would be R plus R cosine theta. So the potential energy right here would be mg times this height, r plus r cos theta plus one-half mvb squared right there. There's the speed at that point. So we can just, now we can take, from this equation, we can take our vb squared and plug it right back into here. And so now we've got mg2r equals, distributing this through, mgr plus mgr cos plus one-half m gr cos. You notice the m's drop out, the g's drop out, and the r's drop out. So all we're left here is two equals one plus cos plus a half a cos. Bring the one over here, this gives you one. Bring those two together, it's three halves cos, or cosine theta equals two-thirds. So now we know the angle. You notice this angle right here, doesn't depend on the radius of the sphere, doesn't depend on the mass of the person, doesn't depend on anything. So I could have, if, if this is all I asked for, I could have said given nothing, find this angle right here. Well, I think if you calculate this, it's probably around 41 degrees right there. Okay, well, 
That means if I know what the cosine is, I can plug that back up in here and I can get VB right here. VB is VB squared is two thirds GR or VB is the square root of two thirds GR right here. Okay, so now I know the speed at that point. I, I'll need the sine of the angle. Well, if I know the cosine, I should be able to get the sine. The sine is just the square root of one minus cosine squared. And cosine squared is four ninths which is 5 ninths, which is, take the square root of 5 thirds. So I know what the sine of theta is, I know what the cosine is, and I know what the speed is right there. So now, from here to here is a projectile problem. So we already know how to do projectile problems from B to C. I'm going to put my origin right there because this is the distance I want to calculate. I'm going to put my origin right there. So here is that picture. Here's the origin. Here is that object on the sphere, just flying off the sphere, and here's where it comes down and hits the ground right here. Now, we know what this height was. This height from up here was r plus r cos theta, but remember, cos theta was 2 thirds, so it's 2 thirds r plus r, and so th this distance right here would be 5 thirds r, because it's r plus two-thirds right here. So it's three-thirds plus two-thirds is, is five-thirds r. That's the initial height. That's the height that we begin with. The final y would be zero. You're down here. Now the x value right there, this is just, there's r, there's theta. It's r sine theta. But we already said we knew what sine theta was. It was from right here, square root of five over three. So now we've got r sine theta, which is my x of nine. The final x is d, right there, that's the point d0. Now, the velocity is in this direction, right there. And that direction, right there, you notice this angle's theta, this angle's theta, the angle right there is 90 minus theta, or this angle is back to theta again. So this angle, right here, is back to theta again. So VB in the X would be VB cosine theta. So VB in the X, which is VB in the X, well, this is going to be VB cosine theta. I'll put it in the next one. And VB in the Y, since I called up positive, it would be minus VB in the Y, would be minus VB sine theta. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug in our constant acceleration between here and here. We'll plug in our x. x is equal to x sub naught plus vbx, which is vb cosine theta t. So vb was this. Cosine theta was 2 thirds t right here. So there is my x equation. Now what I want to find is d. And I have two unknowns. I have d and t. So we'll plug into the y equation. And in the y equation, I can solve for t and plug it back in. So here's the y equation, vb y equal y naught plus vb y t minus 1 half gt squared. vb y, remember, was minus vb sine theta. We know what vb is. We know what sine theta is. Okay. So now we just have to solve this equation. It looks like a quadratic. So we'll put it in standard form. Throw everything on this side. So this is the first term, 1 half gt squared. This term brought over the other side would be positive, and I'll combine the square root of 5 and the square root of 2 to the square root of 10 right here. And then I have this third term right there. So there is my quadratic. If I solve the quadratic, we get minus b, which is minus that, plus or minus the square root of this squared, which is just that, minus 4ac. Well, since that's a, um, that's going to make this a plus because I got minus and a minus right there. We get 4 times a times c right there, all over 2a. Okay, now I notice that every term has a square root of r in it. I'll pull that out. And I have a square root of g over g in every term. I'll pull out the square root of g in the denominator. Square root of g over g is just square root of g in the denominator. And so all I got left are numbers. So all I got left is the square root of 10 over 27 plus, now over, 
sorry, the square root of 10 over 27. I'm going to write this term first right here. But this one right here, there is the twos drop out here. So this is 10 thirds. If it's 10 thirds, I'll multiply both top and bottom by 9. That's 90 over 27. So this becomes 90 over 27. Then minus off this term, 27, 10 27. I can pull the 27 out of all through all of it. And this is the square root of 10 plus 90, which is the square root of 100, which is just 10, minus the square root of 10. So there's my time right there. Now I'm just going to take that time, plug it right up into here, and I'll get the distance right there. So we got the distance is equal to uh, the distance from right here, r square root of 5 over 3, and then plus this term right here. Uh, we get d equals, now I'm going to plug this time right up into here. You notice I have a 2 and I have a square root of 2. So that gave me the square root of 8. I got the 3, square root of 3, if I put it on side, it's the square root of 27, right here. GR, GR, and the only thing I left is the T, and the T, remember, was the square root of, where's my T, right here, right here, T, square root of 8 over 27, G, 10 minus the square root of 10. Okay, so now I wanted to get a common denominator. So there's a 20, square root of 27, a square root of 27, that's 27. So I need a 27 here. So I said, let's multiply top and bottom by 9. So now I'll pull out the 27. So, and I'll pull out the r. So all I'm left with is 9 square root of 5. This term right here, when I multiply it out, this gives me 10 square root of 8. Or I can pull the 2 out of that. It's 20 square root of 2. And then this term right here is minus the square root of 80. The square root of 10 and square root of 80 is minus the square root of 80. Now I can simplify that term. Square root of 80 is 4 square root of 5. And 20, 10 square root of 8 is 20 square root of 2. I can combine those two terms together. 9 square root of 5 minus 4 square root of 5 is 5 square root of 5 plus 20 square root of 2. Pull out the 5. We get 5 over 27. I'm just left with the square root of 5 plus 4 square root of 2. And if I plug in the number right there, 1.46 r. And there's r. That would be 2 r. So it looks like it's like 1.46 r. It looks like it's about right. You had a problem similar to this on the homework right here, chapter 7. The only difference is you had a hemisphere, you didn't have a full sphere right here. So this is just to kind of help you along with that question right here. You notice we did the energy from here to here, and we did that just to find the speed there, and then from here to here it was just a projectile. So we're kind of putting together energy with projectiles right here. I could have put a spring there, we could have bounced off the ground, we could have done other things to it, added everything into it, but this was enough right here. Okay.